Hi, it's Joe Mazumdar of Exploration Insights at the Pre-PDAC Metals Investment Forum in Toronto, Canada. And with me is Mike Jones, CEO of Platinum Group Metals. Platinum Hi. Group Metals has a development project in a commodity that's been the only commodity that's beaten the S&P 500 in the last decade, palladium. So uh, the project is Waterberg, which Correct. was a discovery in the north limb of the Bushveld. So give us a little bit of background how it was found. Sure. So we uh, actually got a group of scientists together, uh, experts on the whole Bushveld complex in South Africa, well known for its platinum reserves. And we asked those scientists for all their ideas. Uh, Waterberg was actually ranked number four. And we had a great team together that actually uh, came up with this targeting. The reason it was not found before, it's under sedimentary cover. So it's just 100 meters or and 300 feet. And that's the name of the formation sure. is Waterberg. Waterberg, that's yeah. the cover rock. So that's right. what kept it for us to be discovered in 2012. Right. And so it, that was 2012, and now we're in 2020, and now we're sitting with a feasibility study and interest from one of the major PGM producers in, um, in South Africa, Impala Platinum. Correct, yeah. And so Impala um, did a lot of due diligence. They did about a year's worth of due diligence on the project before they came in, and they bought 15% stake uh, for $30 million in cash, which is unusual for a major company. That was company. at the end of 17? Uh, 2017, that's yeah. right. And uh, yeah, then when we moved on from there and worked together on the feasibility study, which we just completed, um, and formally the joint venture approved the feasibility study on December 5th, and now we're working on the implementation step. So it's great to have a great partner who uh, became very engaged and uh, also owns a smelter. Right. Well, I mean, I, I, I guess they have a right of first refusal on the concentrates that you generate. That's right. And, and I guess the unique part about Waterberg is not only it's on the northern edge of the North Limb where nobody thought, well, they thought the Bushveld ended. Correct. Uh, but also the palladium content is much richer yeah. and the base metal content is much lower. So the key thing there is how this concentrate will fit into a smelter. So unusually for South Africa, we're 63% palladium. 29% platinum, about 6% gold, and sadly only 1.5% rhodium. We wish we had more rhodium. But the base metal content is the right level such that the concentrate can go straight into Impala's smelter or another Without smelter in South Africa. Without any significant modifications. Yeah, so no big modifications into the smelter because it has the right level. Okay, so in terms of metallurgy, it's fine, which is what people want. But also what interests uh, me, as well as them and you, I guess, is the thickness of the ore body and the change between the West Slim, how they mine, and the North Slim. And so uh, for our retail investors, can you uh, explain what the difference is with respect to productivity? Sure. So, yeah, I mean, it's quite amazing, actually. For the last 80 years, they've been mining what's called conventional, which is one meter thick, drilled by hand. Yeah. Um, it's very labor intensive. And in and terms it's of product, very deep. And it's getting deep. A lot of these mines are down uh, 3,000 feet from surface, uh, 1,000 meters, and um, very labor intensive. So the productivities, as you mentioned, are uh, two to three ounces per employee per month. I mean, when you think about that long term in the modern world, yeah. that's really not going to work very well. Once you can go to mechanized, you can move up into the five to 10 ounces per employee per month. What's unique about Waterberg is that it's 30 ounces per employee per month. And that's because these stopes are 40 meters or 120 feet thick in the individual panels, and you can drill them off. You're essentially dropping a 13-story office building with every blast. Right. So the, the, it's really a completely different style of, of operation. But from what I understand is, um, you know, uh, Impala uh, Platinum, as, as our audience may know, uh, purchased North American Palladium last year. And obviously the asset was something they wanted, but also the, the knowledge base that they brought with respect to mechanized underground mining was something they wanted. Absolutely, because Impala's uh, got some uh, narrow mechanized mines, both in Zimbabwe and South Africa, so they operate a portfolio of mines. But the really big bulk mining when they bought North American Palladium, they got that expertise. And they actually talked about that and the motivation to buy North American Palladium is that those skills would be useful at Waterberg. So productivity uh, is much different on the North Limb. And then obviously uh, one of the highest margin deposits, PGN deposits in the world, uh, I mean, besides Norilsk, is that Mogokwena uh, open pit mine that Angloplatz has. Right? Yeah, it's an amazing thing to fly over and, you know, is a real testament to the kind of thing that you can do to make money in South Africa. Yeah. Um, it'll produce about a million ounces a year um, at more than a thousand dollar an ounce margin. So. You know, it's really a truly world-class asset, and as is Waterberg. Um, 
our feasibility study sets the production rate at 420,000 ounces a year, um, dominated by palladium, which is the right metal. Right. And, 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 you know, when people talk about South Africa, they talk about, you know, black empowerment and that. And, but you've already got that sorted out in terms of. Your yeah, in fact, of actually, we're, we're over empowered, as it were, because um, we empowered at the asset level and supported that oh, particular right. private company. But we also at the top level company, the listed company now, our largest shareholder is actually an empowerment fund. And they bought their stock like everybody else, um, you know, both off the TSX, the NYSC and in placements. And they're now a 32% shareholder uh, is a fund called HCI in South Africa. And they're, they're a very strong, diversified investor. They have uh, about 70 or $80 million a year in earnings. So they're, they're quite a great uh, backer to have in the company. Right. And, and, and now, um, I guess your next big catalyst for Waterberg is, is the actual permit to mine. Right. So we just had a major announcement uh, yesterday or the day before um, about Impala has stepped up to pay 100% of the project costs. So um, we, they have an option now that 90 days after the mining right, they can make their final commitment for another $130 million of paying all the costs. Right. Which, but, which is $130 million? $130 million, yeah. Okay. And they also have to buy $35 million of equity from Jogmec. Correct. And they have to do that at the same time. So they have 90 days after the mining right. But we expect the mining right to be quite soon, actually. We've yeah. completed 135 public meetings. We've filed 80,000 pages of documents. Um, and we're right in the final stages of that mining permit, which is both the permit to operate uh, and build the mine. And the, the operation period, actually, of the mine and the feasibility study is 45 years. And, and also, the other thing is that you were saying before, like the, one of the critical path items was the underground declines to get those going so you could begin them constructing them in 2021. So part of this three and a half to four million dollars will be actually spent on trying to resolve that. Well, it's also it's a typical detailed engineering that you do. So once you get to feasibility study, you have a general design. You actually need construction level drawings to get them out to contractors yeah. to tender. And so that's part of the work. That we do. That down. And you don't want to slow that down. So Impala has agreed to pick that up. And they're also looking for optimization opportunities, things that you might be able to do slightly better than you uh, have in the feasibility study. Right. Okay. So, so in terms of a retail investor and looking at palladium exposure, what is attractive for them right now in terms of catalysts going forward for for the for, for the retail? company um, for the company? Definitely, the mining right is a major milestone, and that will kick off this election by Impala. Um, and a formal construction decision. So we're right there at a phenomenal time in the And then the you'll Palladium reduce market. your equity portion of the project from fifty uh, percent um, down to thirty-two. That's right. right. But um, Impala is also responsible to put together the project financing um, and arrange that. We don't have a what debt. What is the upfront capital there? So the total peak funding is six hundred and forty million dollars. Right. Um, internally, we're using a model of fifty-fifty debt equity, but that's yet to be determined. Um, but the great thing is the first $130 million in construction, if Impala elects in, is all at their cost. And so I think for our audience, what they got to understand is the difference between what we call capital expenditures, which is actually quoted in the feasibility study about $1.1 billion, between actual that and cash calls is the money you actually need to construct. Because as you build the project, you actually generate revenue, but you can't call it revenue because you are not into commercial production. So the need for money versus how much you spend can be two different things. And so when we talk about peak capital, that's the number we're really Yeah, they're using, the word I use is peak funding, yeah, peak um, which funding. is the bottom of the cash flow curve. So it includes contingencies, includes all the money that you actually need to do it. And as you point out, you're not officially in commercial production until you hit 70% of capacity yeah. uh, for several months. But you're still making money. But you're still making money as you do that. So that puts your peak funding ahead of that commercial decision. Right. Okay. So for anybody looking for pal palladium exposure, there's very few, I mean, uh, palladium cons uh, I mean, it's hard to get out of Russia and South Africa for PGMs. Absolutely. There are a number of smaller assets. The two most important ones, interestingly, have been bought by South African companies. Yeah. So Sabanye bought Stillwater for $2 billion in cash. Yeah. Uh, Impala has now bought North American palladium for $750 million in cash. And the other choice is to invest with Norilsk, which is largely a nickel mine. Yeah. But large, world-class palladium deposits are very rare, and Waterberg is one of these. Right. And, and that's what makes it unique also on the North Limb or anywhere in the Bush Anywhere Island, in South Africa, yes. Is the content of palladium. Correct. Okay. So uh, thanks, Mike. Appreciate My pleasure. It. Thanks okay. for having me. So that's Mike Jones, CEO of uh, Platinum Group Metals. And... You'll notice that the PLG is the ticker in New York, and actually it does more liquidity there than, than in Toronto. The next big catalyst is the mining permit, and then 
the option of that hopefully gets triggered by Impala to take their 50% and take this into production. So it's Joe Mazumdar, Exploration Insights at the Metal Investment Forum at Pre-PDAC uh, in Toronto, Canada. Thank you for watching.